But that brings up the next thing down from the horizontal asymptote, which is the when there, when there is an oblique asymptote. So first of all, I understand that the degree of my numerator is larger than the degree of my denominator. So there is not going to be a horizontal asymptote that exists. Oh, really? And we'll look at the graph to confirm that. Vertical asymptote. Set the denominator equal to 0. I can't get anything easier than this, right? OK? But when there is not a horizontal asymptote, there's two things that could happen. Could it be that this is actually a hole? Yeah. It could have been, right? But fortunately, I see that x minus 1 is not going to like divide out with this. So nothing divides out. But be careful, because that could be a hole. And then you'd know, oh, there's a hole. But that's why there's no horizontal asymptote, right? Um, but in a lot of the cases, in most cases that we're going to be talking about in here, we're going to be looking at an asymptote or a slant asymptote. So to find the slant asymptote, we're going to go back to what we did before, division. Because doesn't this divide into that? Yeah. It might have a remainder, but we can divide it to it, right? So let's divide and see what we get. x minus 1 divides into x squared minus 4. x goes into x squared x times. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is a negative 4x. Now this one kind of gets confusing because we don't have a place value. So I'm going to create a place value and then put the 4. Oh, so you didn't create a place value? You said yeah, because I didn't have anything with x's. Oh. Yes, question? OK. I mean, you don't have to do the place value. I just, to me, it's easier to see it this way. 0 minus a negative 4x is going to be a positive 4x. x, and then you could do negative 4 minus 0, which is negative 4. x divides into 4x, positive 4 times. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4. I didn't get this last time. Why did I get, I thought I got 10. Huh? Like, why did you use x plus 4? x plus 4. Like, like I did 0 minus a negative 4x. Yeah, but like, 4, yeah. x divides into 4x. No, 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 no. Yeah. Like, your choice of, uh, you said x, what is x? I can't see my math lab. Oh, that should be a positive 4. Oh. Wait, no. 4 minus, no, it's a negative 4. <laughs> I don't remember getting the negative 1, though. Oh, it doesn't even matter, though, anyways. It cancels out. It doesn't matter. x squared minus. It cancels out, though. I, it, minus. Crap, what the heck did I do? Yeah. You put it in negative 4x. Yeah, yeah, x why, squared minus why, did you, minus why did you choose this thing right here? It's x squared minus x, not x squared. Yeah, it should be. Oh, like it is 1. OK, thank you. I don't know. All right, let's go back to the long division. x times x is x squared. X times negative 1 is a negative x, right? Yeah. Okay. But still, it's nice to have that place value. All right, so now I subtract. Fascinating students. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Students, once the bell rings, we need for all students to make your way to your designated area. There should be no students lingering in the courtyard at all. Once again, we need for every student to make their way to their buses as well as your after-school activities that you're involved in. Yes, we've got plenty of time. Once again, no lingering in the courtyard. Thank you. OK, guys. Shh. Sorry. Right. Now, this is important because I need to confirm this with you guys. Last, in the last example, we took the remainder and we put it over there, right? right. Now, I don't have enough time to explain why we do this or why this works. Um, but for right now, all I want you to understand is the slant asymptote is just q of x. It's just the quotient without the remainder. So all the slant asymptote is y equals x plus 1. So you don't need to worry about the remainder. That's why I was like, oh, it doesn't matter if I made a mistake. Well, obviously, I made a bigger mistake early on. But if you make a mistake at the remainder, it doesn't matter. Is there any f value? Oh, hold on. Let me finish this. So then let's get to our x-intercept real quick. Set the numerator equal to 0. x equals plus or minus 2. y intercept, constant over constant. y is equal to 4. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and check my answer so you guys can kind of verify what this looks like. 